All right, this laptop gets so hot under load, I literally tried an experiment to see if I could cook my breakfast on it. Think I'm joking? I am not. But let's step back a moment and talk about this new XPS 15 for 2023. If you aren't familiar with the XPS 15, it's a premium laptop that targets content creators and those looking for performance on the go. That being said, it's not at the performance level that you would expect from a high-end gaming laptop, something like an Alienware. This year's model is basically the same laptop that Dell released four years ago, with updated CPU and GPU options for 2023, Intel's 13th Gen H series and Nvidia's 4000 series. And that's the fundamental problem. You're grabbing a laptop chassis that is well known to not be the best at cooling high performance components, and then putting even higher performing components that run even hotter inside. And in the case of this XPS 15, the issue isn't just inadequate cooling restricting the performance, it's also the heat you feel while using the laptop. Even for casual tasks, this laptop feels warm to the touch, and the moment you start doing anything that requires performance, it feels hot. Now, a laptop this size with powerful components feeling warm at certain places, that's not unusual. But what makes this one so much worse than others is where it feels warm. The hotspots are exactly where your fingers touch the keyboard the most. It's around the palm rests and the W and I keys. So it's super noticeable. And this, by the way, was the reason I haven't recommended this laptop in the past, even though there is a ton to love about it. It's compact with lots of performance. The keyboard is outrageously comfortable. The trackpad is awesome and very accurate. And the screen options are stunning. It's even upgradable where you can replace the RAM and storage yourself. And this is all packaged in a premium feeling chassis. So let's take a look and see how this new CPU and GPU perform in this chassis from four years ago. Starting with Geekbench, which tests a variety of common CPU performance tasks. It is beaten handily by the MacBook Pros with Apple's 12 core M2 processors. In fact, it's also beaten in multi-core performance by Dell's own XPS 17 from last year with Intel's 12th gen processor. In fact, comparing generation to generation, this laptop is only 5% faster than last year's XPS 15 in single core and 8% in multi core. FYI, here are my results from the newer Geekbench 6. I'll probably switch over to it fully in a couple of months. That's because some laptops that I wanted to compare this laptop to, I no longer have and have only saved Geekbench 5 scores. Switching to Cinebench, which tests how this laptop performs under full load. Compared to the XMG Neo 16 with the same CPU, you can see how poorly this laptop performs. In fact, it performs around the same in multi-core as last year's XPS 15 and worse in single core. To try to work out what's going on here and why it performs so poorly, I ran Cinebench on a loop for 10 minutes, basically a torture test to see how the laptop performs thermally. There was a bit of a drop in performance, now widening that gap to the XMG Neo 16, which as I said, has the same CPU. You can see that this laptop doesn't come close to reaching the full potential of this processor. The moment I took a look at CPU temperatures, the reason became clear. This laptop's processor hits a whopping 106 degrees Celsius. I didn't think that was possible. I thought a laptop CPU was forced to throttle its performance when temperatures hit 100 degrees. The most I've recorded before is 102, which I think is just an anomaly as the CPU switched to start throttling performance. I even called up other laptop reviewers to ask what the max temperatures they'd ever recorded. The highest number I heard was 105 degrees. So I think that this laptop now holds the crown of the hottest processor recorded. And that isn't good. But it does explain why we aren't getting any more performance out of the laptop CPU. It's thermally constrained. And it isn't just the internals that are hot. As I said before, keyboard temperatures when running performance tasks soared to 49 degrees Celsius, and fan noise during performance tasks was very loud. And remember how I pointed out that the XMG Neo 16 with the same CPU performed much better? It ran substantially cooler for the same fan noise. Look, if Dell are going to create a thin laptop like this one, and it is a lot thinner than the XMG Neo 16. They simply shouldn't be putting an H-series processor in here. It's completely misleading for people thinking that they are getting that kind of performance. It should be a lower wattage one like a P or U-series. And don't even get me started on Dell offering an upgrade to an i9 processor. 
There is zero chance that this laptop can call that processor, and anyone who buys that upgrade is just gifting Dell their money. Switching to graphics performance, the RTX 4070 in this laptop is much more powerful than the graphics in last year's XPS 15 and even 17, and it does perform very well for video editing. That being said, it significantly underperforms even a mid-range gaming laptop like Lenovo Slim 7 from last year. Just be careful though, not all 4070 graphics in laptops perform the same. There is a huge range depending on how much power the manufacturer chooses to feed it with. In this case, this is an extremely low performing 4070 at 40 watts of power. The 4070's range is 35 watts to 115. Of course, Dell's marketing department doesn't disclose how low wattage this laptop's 4070 is on their website. They just let buyers be misled into believing that this could be a very powerful GPU. Look folks, I was so blown away by how hot this laptop felt, I decided to try a little experiment to see if I could cook my breakfast on it, an egg. After researching egg cooking temperatures, I discovered that you really need a surface at 62 Celsius. Given that this laptop's keyboard deck only hit 49, I thought perhaps if I just leave the egg on for longer, it would eventually cook. So I wrapped the laptop in tin foil and tried. Unfortunately, it didn't end up being hot enough to cook the egg on and my experiment was a failure. Two takeaways on this. Do not try to cook your breakfast on a laptop, it doesn't work and it obviously could break it. And two, do not watch my channel for cooking advice. Anyway, I'm going to round out this review with a couple of other important items. In the past, there were manufacturing issues causing the trackpad to feel like it was kind of double clicking when it wasn't. I can confirm that this trackpad worked perfectly well. There was also an issue on the XPS 17 where when the laptop was doing high performance tasks, it would require more power than the charger could deliver and therefore drain the battery. I measured total system power draw of this laptop and that never happened, even when doing very high performance tasks. I did try Dell's performance modes and found that the default optimized mode performed about the same as Dell's ultra performance mode for CPU tasks. However, for graphics tasks, ultra performance was faster. I did try quiet mode too, by the way. It didn't make the laptop that much quieter and dropped the laptop's performance quite a bit, so I wouldn't suggest it. I did not try cool mode, as in the past that has raised the fan noise and lowered performance, so not ideal. Next, Dell has this pop-up for me to rate the laptop. It's ridiculous because it pops up the moment I first open the laptop before I have even used it. And it still pops up if I have notifications off. And finally, I'll leave you off with a lovely one. Occasionally the laptop wouldn't sleep when I closed the lid. It would just sit there running, getting hot and draining the laptop's battery until it eventually died. But every now and then I stumble upon something good. So today I'm going to tell you why I'm really enjoying my new Samsung S23 Plus phone and why I selected it over the other phones out there. I've seen this issue before on other laptops. It sucks that it is happening here and I hope Dell will address it in a software update. Let's wrap. This is a lazy update from Dell on a chassis that was already long in the tooth. And even though this laptop does perform significantly better in graphics, it's just too hot to actually use. Seriously, if I was doing performance tasks on this laptop, I'd have to buy an external keyboard and honestly, noise cancelling headphones to deal with the fan noise. This negates the point of having a laptop to begin with. And at a starting price of $2,400, I'd look long and hard about buying something different like a MacBook Pro or even a nice Windows desktop. For the people that this laptop is targeted at, creators, both those options are going to be much better. For casual users who are interested in buying this laptop for the many great benefits it offers, and there are many, great screen, keyboard, trackpad, and premium feeling chassis, just be aware the laptop still feels noticeably warm to the touch and you will hear fan noise at times. For you guys, if you're okay with that trade-off, I'd just save some money and buy last year's model. Seriously, you really will notice no difference at all. I do want to remind viewers that my criticism of this laptop, it doesn't really extend to its 17-inch brother. That laptop is larger and its hotspots are further up the laptop so they aren't as distracting. That's why you may have seen that I actually highly recommended that laptop in my best laptops you can buy video from six months ago. I'll place a link to it down below. Well, that's all for today, folks. 
If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that like button and get subscribed. Not only does it show your appreciation for these videos, but it also makes my mother very proud. Also, I've got some big announcements coming about the future of this channel, huge ones. So make sure you've also clicked the notification bell so you don't miss them. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.